Thank you so much. An absolute pleasure to be back in Adelaide at the fabulous RI Oz. Uh, thank you everyone for coming on the last day of our National Festival of Democracy. Uh, it's great that you've managed to break away from that excitement to come and spend the afternoon here in Adelaide at RI Oz at Science, Science Exchange. We've been running uh, since the 9th of August, the great big science read, and everyone's been encouraged to read all sorts of, um, all sorts of books, whether it's science fact or science fiction. Uh, I'm going to share with you before we start uh, the, my nominated list, and um, I'd be interested if you put your hand up uh, if you'd actually have read these books and whether you agree with the choice. So um, on the non-fiction side, The Demon Haunted World, Science as a Candle in the Dark by Carl Sagan. Anyone read that? Well, put it on your list. It's, it's a lovely, lovely piece of writing, very literary. Uh, Carl Sagan, uh, who's now unfortunately passed away, died in 1996, um, was a, a very literary, um, very lyrical writer. And if you ever saw his um, television series, uh, Cosmos, which actually inspired us to launch the magazine, you can pick up uh, copies of, um, of Cosmos over there. Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful writer, and in that book he, he argues why science is, uh, that science is not dispassionate, but it's a dis you need sometimes that dispassion to make sense of a rather chaotic and complex world. Another one was The Coming Plague, Newly Emerging Diseases in the World Out of Balance by Laurie Garrett. Anyone? No. I am introducing you here to gold, ladies and gentlemen, gold, and I highly recommend you correct it. Um, this is an example of um, Laurie Garrett, beautiful writer again. Um, I, love, I love this mix of science, and, and you'll see a lot of it throughout the day, um, this mix of science and, and a literary approach to the writing about science. Does, science doesn't have to be, you know, deadly dull. Um, Laurie Garrett writes beautifully and passionately about public health. Um, and emerging diseases, uh, how diseases are coming back, whether it's tuberculosis, um, that we thought we'd vanquish this disease, it's suddenly coming back and it's coming back stronger than ever, um, but also because we're pushing into the new environments, we're uh, coming across new diseases like HIV and Ebola, and uh, you know, we've had it here in Australia with Hendra virus, which uh, you know, killed all those horses and then killed some people. Um, wonderful book, uh, The Rise and Fall of the Third Chimpanzee uh, by Jared Diamond, anyone? Ah, oh, well, I like I'm not totally obscure. Now, there's a, there's, a, there's a strong book on why it is that, um, you know, a wonderful book that what he, why he wrote that book over 10 years is because he was trying to answer the question uh, of a Pap Papua New Guinean friend of his as they're walking along the beach. Um, and they said, he, he asked him, he said, oh, yes, well, you know, you, you white people, you're just so superior. And he said, no, we're not superior. But he said, yeah, yeah, but look, you know, you, you created all the technology and you dominate the world. And he couldn't answer the question. Um, he, f he, he didn't have the tools to answer that question. So he spent 10 years answering that question and the result is that wonderful, wonderful book. Um, the Future Readers, um, Tim Flannery, yes. Uh, Longitude by David Sabell, yes. Uh, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, by Richard Feynman. Ah, okay, great. And The Double Helix by James Watson. And of course, we can't forget science fiction. The list is probably too long. Science fiction is what got me into science and took me to geology and eventually to editing Cosmos and, you know, been on television at, uh, for ABC TV Science Unit. But Foundation by Isaac Asimov, anyone? Yeah, great. Uh, Pandora's Star by Peter F. Hamilton. No? Recommended. Uh, Ender's Game by Austin Scott, Austin Scott Card. Yep, we've got some people. Ringworld by Larry Nevin. Larry Nevin does have the best quote, which I've ripped off many, many times, um, that um, the dinosaurs uh, were wiped out because they didn't have a space program. Just brilliant. So that's the kind of writing he does. Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. Fabulous. Uh, the Forever War by Joe Holderman. Um, if you're, you'd be interested, sir, they're going to make a film about that. Hollywood is making a fabulous film about it. So The Forever War is a beautiful book. Beautiful book, isn't it? Um, Red Mars and Green Mars and Blue Mars. Oh, this guy's reading them all. <laughs> you and I. Oh, no. And City in the Stars by Arthur C. Clarke. Well, that's the kind of stuff that inspired me, and, um, bef and I wanted to share that with you, and uh, thank you. I'm glad that I introduced you some of the books, but also some of them you have, we've, been we've been able to share by having read them. I'll give you a quick summary of what's happening around the building. Uh, here on the main auditorium, which is where you have the bar, 
very important. Um, we have going to have a, a number of sessions, um, three sessions of various speakers uh, sharing poetry, including the Saiku competition, right outside the building. Do you remember the old 1940s films where they had, uh, you know, that, that kind of, um, tel uh, 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 what's it called? They, we've forgotten it. Telegraph. Uh, yeah, ticker tape. Thank you so much. You know, the, the ticker tape would run outside with, like, the... Um, uh, the latest news had broken, you know, war is over, they walked on the moon. Well, not only have they introduced it, but um, they came up with a, with a way of running poetry around it, to creating haikus around science. Isn't that a wonderful idea? This place is just pumping with really creative energy, so very excited. So anyway, you'll be able to see that, um, but don't go outside until, until we finish this, okay? You have to stay inside. Uh, so we're going to have that. We're going to have the Sounds Made Marvelous winners. Uh, there'll be an explanation about that there'll be bar open for the refreshments in between. We're also going to have um, PowerPoints that are going to display some recommended readings from people around the, the country and some of them around the world. Uh, we're also going to invite people to making their own mini science zine. You've got examples right, uh, lying around. In the tower room, which is apparently that way and to the other left. Okay, yeah, to the left, um, but you're right. Um, we're going to have a great big science book swap, uh, where you can swap one book for another. Uh, a dis and dis a display of Lewis Thomas's book, Verse, Can I Ask You Something? Published in 1984. There's only 120 copies of this beautifully handcrafted book um, wherever produced. And we're lucky to, thanks to Erica Jolly, who'll be speaking a little bit later. Uh, she's made them available, so thank you very much. And at the basement, which strangely enough is in the basement, you'll uh, see the Sala exhibition, uh, Chemia. Living Alchemy, a world of living alchemy, in which the South Australian living artist, Sala, Festival Fuses, National Science Week, and the UN International Year of Biodiversity, with exploration of the wonderful world of chimeras, hybrids, and other strange bedfellows.